today we are doing brakes on the Miata. It is super easy to do brakes on the Miata. There's like maybe one quirk that I'll show you. Um, if you don't know how to do brakes, tag along. You're gonna know how to do uh, Miata brakes, at least for the NA after this video is done. Um, it's really easy, so let's just like jump right into it. So the trick with the rears is behind the caliper, there is actually a bolt that you need to remove. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a bolt back here. Uh, not the parking brake bolt, which is this one. You actually want to remove the other one, so it's, it's this one right here. And it's the one closest to the, the axle. You need to remove that bolt and then take an Allen key and put the Allen key inside to loosen the brake pads. And that's how the brake pads come off. And that's how you actually um, that's how you actually retract the caliper. That's that's the trick with uh, NA Miatas and possibly NVs also. Be sure to crack open your master cylinder reservoir. You can leave the cap on there, just you don't want any pressure to build up in there.
So to adjust the brakes, you tighten up that Allen bolt basically all the way until uh, the pads make contact with the rotor and the rotor won't spin anymore and then loosen it just a touch so that the rotor spins freely. Let's talk for a second about why I'm doing brakes on this car. I got this car a couple months ago, and when I test drove it, there was some issues with the brakes. Like they were they were a little soft, but I could still lock the tires up, so I, I thought no big deal. Fast forward to a few weeks ago, I was on a cruise with my friends, and probably like the first turn, the first sharp turn. I go for the brakes and I get nothing and I go directly into a ditch. I got super lucky. The car was completely fine. I wasn't injured. The only thing that was hurt was my ego because I was there with all my friends and they saw me put my car into a ditch. It was pretty bad. I, I joke about it, but like in all seriousness, I could have died. <laughs> I mean or I could have gotten very seriously injured. I could have towed my car. Uh, it's really easy to do brake maintenance on a Miata, so there is just like no excuse not to check your brakes regularly. I should check my brakes. I knew something was up and I, I didn't look into it. I should have and I got super lucky. <laughs> One pro tip here, um, one thing I always like to have when I'm doing a new set of brake pads is a file. This is super useful because sometimes like, like these look fine and I think these are gonna fit no problem. These look fine 
these look fine, and I think these are gonna fit no problem, but like, especially if you're using like factory replacements, um, they just never fit quite right. The, the casting isn't quite right. And sometimes you just need to file it down a little bit here or there to get it to smoothly fit in because you don't want these to, to bind up against your calipers. And so, so bring a file with you, throw it in your bag, especially if you're going out to the track or something, and just have it with you. So, uh, figured out what was wrong with my car. This caliper is completely rusted out. It's frozen. The pins were frozen. It's great to, uh, to find the problem, but it really actually kind of sucks because like when I bought the car, the other three calipers were replaced and so like it, it, the car had a major brake service and the brakes should have been great, but uh, I guess they missed this one, so. Um, I have to go get another caliper. So <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna take a quick break while I, I get a caliper. Stuff happens, like when you're working on your car, like even simple things, stuff happens. So I'm gonna replace the caliper and uh, we'll get back to this brake job. Check out this rotor. This is um, a full floating rotor. It's got a, a, a aluminum hat and uh, the, the disc, the cast disc around it. And it's got these cool slots in it. Never put a rotor like this on a Miata. <laughs> it just, it doesn't make sense. There is no reason to have a rotor like this on a Miata. I mean, this is going on my Lotus. The only reason it's going on my Lotus is to save a little weight. Ask your favorite track buddy uh, what kind of rotors you should put on, on your car. And it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be a Miata. Almost any car, this is true. And you should be putting blank rotors on your car because rotors are consumables. Blank rotors are, are gonna stop just as well as something like this. Uh, but uh, the difference in cost is like hundreds or maybe even thousands depending on your rotor. So uh, do not recommend these. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm using these on my Lotus just, just for weight savings. But the, the price 
for something like this on a Miata just does not make sense. And for most cars, I argue, even folks with fancy ceramic brakes, a lot of them will actually take their fancy brakes off and replace them with blank rotors when they go to the track. A lot of those cars are super heavy, so like any weight savings from something like this doesn't help them either. And whatever you do, do not get drilled rotors. The ones with the holes in them, those are terrible. Those holes crack and your rotor will break, especially on track. I know they look cool, or do they look cool? I don't know, but do not get friggin' drilled rotors. There, there is an exception. There are some rotors like, like Porsche rotors come from the factory. They come with the, the holes in them. Those are a little bit different because those holes are cast into the rotor, which is, is different than like a drilled rotor. Don't do drilled rotors. Blank rotors. Say it with me. Blank rotors. We're not doing rotors right now, but um, this is when you do them. Here I'm taking off the speed bleeder nipple that I have on my old caliper. I'm going to put it on the, the new caliper. You'll see why in a minute.
So the, the speed bleeder nipple has a valve in it, which lets you bleed the brakes without needing to close the nipple between pumps. You can just pump the brakes. So it makes bleeding brake fluid super easy. All right, we are just about wrapped up here. Uh, it was pretty easy, but a uh, few complications. That's to be expected of like a 30 year old car. Uh, I didn't want to replace the whole caliber, but you know, whatever, I guess bonus. <laughs> Go ahead, like, and subscribe, because I'm gonna be doing more videos, working on cars, driving cars, track videos, I have no idea. Uh, so jump on board and uh, I'll see you in the next one.